Okay, so if you like Nixie tubes and clocks, you will love this product. This clock is named LX Tube IPS, and as the name suggests, it tries to mimic the look of the tubes of those Nixie tubes, but using the IPS displays. So behind this transparent acrylic part, there are four small displays, and they can display pretty much any image. And so today I will show you how to create your own set of digits that look like a Nixie tubes. Actually, the ones that you see right now are the digits that we will create today in the tool called Photopy. But before we do that, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, and that's PCBWay. And as the name suggests, they offer PCBs, but also 3D printing, CNC manufacturing, SMD stencils, and much more. And if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. So thank you PCBWay, and let's get back to our video, and let's get started. And I will start by connecting this clock to my PC using the provided USB-C cable, and then downloading and running the dedicated software, which is called LXTube IPS. This application is tiny and in Chinese, but I can fix this by clicking this icon, this button to switch to English. And let me actually zoom in so we can see at least something. The first thing that you probably want to do is to click this icon, which will set the time based on your PC time. And if you want the time to be always correct, you might want to click the network set and enter the Wi-Fi settings for your Wi-Fi. That way the display time will be always up to date. If you switch to the more styles, there are many different themes or styles available. And you can select up to four, which will be always on the clock. And then you can use the button on the clock to switch between those. I believe there are about 40 of those, but it's hard to tell because there is no scroll bar. So you have to use your mouse wheel to scroll between those individual designs. And as you can see, there is actually quite a lot of designs that resemble the Nixie clock so this one here is another one there are two designs there and there is one more green one that said I don't think that it will hurt to create one more Nixie tube design but before we actually do that let's start very simple so if I click the display set here is where we can upload custom pictures for those individual digits and if I click this icon it will revert to the default set which is made from those building blocks and if I open the data folder inside the application folder those images are also present in there in the form of 10 different JPEG files size 135 by 240 pixels so let's start with that let's try to create 10 different images for 10 different digits pretty much in any design and see if we can upload it to the display. I will be using a tool called Photopy, which is a free online editing tool, very similar to Photoshop. And so in here, I will click a new project and I will create a new project in the size of the display, which is again 135 by 240 pixels. Let's change the background color to black and hit the create button. Let's select the type tool, click anywhere on the canvas and type digit zero. And if nothing is visible, it's most likely because the color of the text is black as well as the background. So I will click this box and change the color to white. I want to also have the text center aligned and I want it to be much bigger than that. And as for the font, I believe I was using font called inter. Let's just select the font because that one has a variation which is called thin, which is, as the name suggests, very thin. And as for the size, I'll actually make it even bigger. So for example, 220 pixels and then move it to the center of the canvas like so. I need 10 different digit so I'll right click the layer and select duplicate layer then hide the arrow one double click the second one and type in one then click this confirm button and continue like that with all the other digits so again duplicate the layer hide the arrow one double click to change the content type in another digit in this case number two confirm the selection and continue like this you can also use the shortcut ctrl j to duplicate the layer and ctrl enter to confirm a new text and once we have 10 digits, it's time to export those, and we can do this in a few different ways. I can select File, Export as PNG file, but I would have to do this 10 times for every single digit, and that's not very convenient. I can also show all the individual layers, and select File, Export Layers, and if I unclick this checkbox, it will export me 11 layers. The problem is that those individual layers are cropped to the content of the layer, so you can see that the digit 1 is much smaller than, for example, digit 8. So I would have to duplicate the background layer, group it together with the digit, and name it properly using the dash e dash for example one and now it will be exported in the correct size however with this approach i would have a lot of duplicated layers because not only i want to have background layer i probably want to have some layers in front of the digit so instead of doing it like this i will use a different approach and it is exporting combinations if i select file export layers there is the option to export combinations and there is a screenshot showing what it will be doing so as long as we have layers inside groups it will try to export every single combination of those layers which means that we need to put all our digits inside the group so ctrl g to put it inside the group let's name those digits and then we can click again file export layers export combinations and you immediately see that it will export 10 combinations so click the export layers and now all the images include the background layer and have the correct size so let's see if we can put those images on the clock inside the LXTube IPS tool I will click the custom pictures and select our 10 exported images click the open button and in here I will click the upload and after the images are uploaded the clock will restart itself show this matrix animation for a few seconds and finally display our custom digits, so we can call it a success. And even when this theme is the simplest possible one, I quite like it. 
so let's see if we can draw digits that looks like a Nixie cube. And as a first step, let's actually see how the Nixie cube looks like. If I search for Nixie cube on Google Images, there are quite a lot of nice images. This one in particular is very nice and it's very special because Dalibor Farni is someone who is actually producing those Nixie cubes. And there are a few things that make a Nixie cube look like a Nixie cube and that we will try to replicate in our design. The first thing is this very nice looking bright warm glow. The second thing is that by the nature of the Nixie cubes, you can still partially see the unlit digits. And the first thing is this exactly great overlay on top of everything. Now you can see that the glass cube is what makes this Nixie cube being a Nixie cube, but we already have this acrylic overlay on our clock, so I don't think that we need to include it in our design. So back in Photopy, I will zoom in and start applying those effects, and I only want one of those digits to be visible, so for example digit number 3. In order to apply layer styles, you can right click and select blending options, or you can just double click the layer on the right side of the layer like so, and it will open this dialog where you can add individual effects. And let's start by changing the color to yellow by applying the curl overlay and changing the color to some yellow color. For example, something like this. And I know that you can directly change the color of the text itself, but applying the color overlay means that it doesn't matter what the color of the text would be in the first place. I want to have a little bit of variation inside the fill itself, and for that we can use a setting effect, and this very subtle effect that will try to somehow position the same layer inside the layer itself. So in order to visualize this, I will change the blend mode to normal and maybe change it to like something like a blue color and then play with the parameters. So I want much smaller distance and much smaller size, so maybe size could be only like one pixel. And I kind of like the distance, you can see that it creates some variation inside our yellow layer. So what I will do is I will increase the opacity to 100%, but of course use a completely different color than the blue one, it was only for visualizing purposes. So I will go with some light yellow one, maybe something like this. So again, this gives us a little bit of highlight inside the fill of the shape. Let's add the glow and we will actually add multiple glows, starting with the outer glow effect, which kind of makes sense, because again, it's a glow. But I will change the blend mode to linear dodge, which doesn't seem to make any effect right now, but it will make a lot of effects when we start applying more of those effects on top of each other. I will increase the opacity all the way to 100% and maybe change the color to more orange one, so maybe something like this. It already looks much better, but I want much bigger glow, so I'll increase the size to, I don't know, maybe like 30 or 27 pixels, and change the technique from softer to precise. Now, when something is glowing, it's usually not a linear gradient like in here, so it's usually very visible on the edge, and then it's fading quickly with some kind of fall off. And we can simulate this by opening this control curve, and try to make the curve in a way that it's very visible in the beginning, and then it quickly fades out, so maybe something like this. And if you want to have this even less visible, we can change range slightly, so maybe move it to the right side a little bit more, maybe, maybe like this. Now instead of tweaking this glow, I think that the better idea will be to actually combine multiple glows at the same time. And even when we have only one glow, we can apply the drop shadow effect and use it as a glow. And for that we just need to change the blend mode to linear dodge and color to something else than the black. And I think that I will go with just pure red color. You can see that the shadow is offset, so we will change the distance to 0 pixels and then increase both the size, so I don't know, maybe like 47, and both the spread, so maybe, I don't know, like 16%, seems to be looking nice. And I think that this already looks like a glow that you might get from the Nixie cube, but if you want to, we can duplicate this drop shadow effect by clicking this plus icon, that will create us one more copy, and for that, maybe we can change the size to some very small value, like 120 pixels, lower the spread a little bit, and that will give us this additional glow, maybe play with the opacity if you want to. And I think that I like how this looks like, so I'll click the OK button, and put this in the middle. Let's apply the same style to all the digits by right clicking and selecting the layer style copy and then selecting all of those and right clicking and selecting the layer style paste. And if I show the other layers, you can see that now this layer style is applied to all of those. The next item on the list is displaying the unlit states over the lit states. So I'll duplicate this group by right clicking and selecting duplicate layer and rename this list to unlit states. I will actually show all of them, select all of them and select layer style clear. And I want to do a few things. First thing is that those numbers should be black because they are not lit, so I'll double click the layer, select the layer style and apply the color overlay of the black color, then hit the OK button, copy this layer style, so layer style copy, and paste it to all the layers, so layer style paste. But as you can see, those are covering the lit state quite a lot. The first thing is that I will make those digits thinner, and that is by applying the stroke effect, so double click these effects and apply the stroke, but instead of growing outside, I want to grow inside, and I want to change the color to white and change the size to maybe only like one pixel. Now I want to remove everything that's white and for that I will set the blend mode to multiply and this way the digit is even more thinner. Then inside the blending options I will lower the opacity to maybe I don't know like 30 or so percent. Again click the OK button, copy the layer style, so layer style copy and paste it for all the digits, so layer style paste. 
and this looks much better but still not perfect. I want the visibility to be based on the background image, so based on the glow, so over the currently displayed number it should be almost invisible and it should be visible on the outside and thankfully there is an easy way out to do that. If I open the blending options for this group by double clicking in here, there are those two sliders, so blend if grey, which means grayscale, for the current layer and for the background layer. So when the background layer is white, meaning very bright, I don't want to see those digits so I will move this slider more to the left side and you will see that those digits starts fading out as I move the slider more to the left side to the point where they completely disappears. If I move it to the right side, they are appearing again. So I want something like this, but I don't want to have a harsh transition. I don't want to have a sudden jump, so so what I can do is I can press the ALT key and actually split this slider into two, meaning starting point and the ending point. And as you can see now there is a smooth transition between displaying and not displaying this layer. And I think that something like this looks very nice. We can nicely see the currently lit digit, but we can also see a hint of those unlit digits. And the nice thing is that I can show a different digit, so for example digit number 7, and the unlit state will automatically adjust the transparency based on this background layers. So the currently lit layer will always be fully visible. And all I have to do is to only show a different digit. Okay, so the last thing that's missing is this hexagonal grid overlay on top of everything. And for that, we need to create some pattern first. For that, let's hide our digits and our only digits for a minute. Zoom in a little bit more. And we want to draw some hexagon. So I'll right click this rectangle and select parametric shape. Set the color to be the white fill. Number of sizes, of course, six. And maybe we can add a little bit of rounding. So maybe two pixels for the rounding. And let's draw the hexagon while pressing the shift key button so it will snap to some predefined find angles or maybe something like this. In order to create a pattern we need to repeat this shape multiple times so what I will do is I will duplicate this shape by either right clicking and selecting duplicate layer or I can as well drag it with the alt key pressed and I will move it maybe to this position and duplicate one more time and then I will duplicate this one so we have like a base of our patterns. I'm mainly looking at the spacing of those hexagons and this looks nice to me. Since our pattern will be in the shape of the rectangle we need to find out the size of this rectangle for our pattern and we can do this by observing the shapes. So if I look at this pixel and I want to move in the horizontal direction I will look for the next occurrence of this pixel and I think that this is the one. So so this will be pretty much the width of our pattern. So this will be the width of our pattern. As for the height I can do the same thing. So here is one pixel and I will move in the horizontal direction until I will find the same pixel which is most likely this one. So this will be the height of our pattern. You can see that for the height of this pattern it's the height of one hexagon plus the spacing which is two pixels. For the width we can say we can start in the middle of one hexagon and end in the middle of the next hexagon. So this is the same size as this one on top. With knowing that I can draw a new rectangle so select the rectangle tool and draw it in the size that we've just shown. So for example going from here to the right side to this pixel and then bottom to include both the one pixel on top and one pixel on bottom below the hexagons. I will change the fill color to be black and move it behind our hexagons and maybe hide the background layer. Now in the normal version of Photoshop you can just select the selection and then select edit define new pattern. This is unfortunately not working in Photo P. In Photo P you have to have the document size matching the pattern which means that in order to create a new pattern we have to create a new document. So what I will do is I will control click this layer that will load the transparency of this layer so pretty much the size of our pattern or I can just select the selection tool and select the same area and then I will select edit copy merge that will copy the content of all the visible layers and create a new document so file new and hopefully the size will be taken from our selection which seems to be the case so hit the create button paste our content so now it's just a pattern and now we can finally select edit define a new pattern that will create a new pattern as you can see in here. We don't need this document anymore so I can just close it without saving and inside our main document I will most likely deselect everything, group our layers for forming the hexagon and hide this as well and instead I will show background our digits and unlit digits, zoom out a little bit and let's create a new pattern fill and we can do this by clicking this icon, this circle and selecting pattern fill and for the pattern itself let's select the one that we have just created so it's this one. Now this pattern is made from white and black color and we don't want to have the white color visible so I'll change the blending mode to multiply and now we can see both the pattern and the background. I feel like the pattern is visible too much and we can apply the same technique as for the unlit states. I will double click the layer to open the layer style and lower the opacity a little bit to maybe like I don't know 30-40% but at the same time I will also use this advanced blending options and split this slider into two by pressing the alt key which will cause the pattern to not be visible over the highlighted states and only be visible outside. If I want I can also make this pattern a little bit smaller by opening the properties and changing the scale to some smaller value and I kind of like it when it's a little bit smaller maybe something like this. And that's pretty much it for the designing of 
of those digits, let's try to export those. But if I go to File, Export Layers and Export Combinations, you can see that we have 500 combinations because we have 10 digits for the lit states, 10 digits for the unlit states and then our 5 shapes for the hexagon pattern. And that's definitely not what we want. So what we need to have is only one group and everything else should be ungrouped and we can do this in a few different ways. Probably the easiest way is to save it as a new document and then delete the hexagonal pattern shapes and merge these unlit states by going to layer, merge layers. You can see it looks kind of strange because the blending mode is not being applied. So I have to change the blending mode to be multiply, but you can see that our advanced blending mode was not applied. So I have to double click this layer again and make sure to set the same blend options. And I believe it was looking something like this. So at this state, our document is ready to be exported. Again, go to file, export layers, export combinations, and we have 10 different combinations. So I'll click the export layers and so here we have our digits exported as 10 individual images so all that's left to do is to jump into the LXTube IPS application click the custom pictures select our 10 digits and click the open button then click the upload button and same as the last time after a few seconds we should see those digits displayed on the clock itself Obviously at this point you can tweak the size of the hexagonal pattern, the visibility of those unlit states and the size of the glow for the main digit. But what I would like to do is to create a variation with a different color. Maybe having a green glow or blue glow instead of this yellow glow. So let's try that. And the first thing that came to mind for changing the color is the hue saturation effect. So I will click the circle and add a new hue saturation effect. And I can drag the hue slider to change the hue. But as you can see it kind of looks strange. I mean this is blue glow but it doesn't look right. And this is green glow but it doesn't look right either. And so this is probably not the best way how to do that. What I will do instead is to look at the individual RGB channels. Clicking the channel step. And in here this is the RGB channel, this is the red channel, green channel and blue channel. And you can see that most of the information is in the red channel, there is a little bit of in the green channel and there is not much in the blue channel. And so as a result everything is kind of red yellowish. And so what I'm thinking is if I use the content of the red channel inside the blue channel everything will be blue. And if I use the content of the red channel inside the green channel everything will be green. So let's try that. For that I will use a layer effect called channel mixer. And in here I can mix individual channels. For red channel, I probably want to have the blue channel. And for the blue channel, I don't want to have a blue channel, but instead I want to have a content of the red channel. And immediately you can see that now I have a blue glow. If I want the inside to be more white, I can most likely in the red channel add a little bit of green channel as well. So by increasing the green channel, that will make the middle part more white. And I actually like this appearance quite a lot. Let's rename this layer to blue glow and export the layers using the combination. So file, export layers, export combinations, click the export layers. And here are the exported digits. And this is how they look like when you upload them to the clock. You might have noticed that I've made the hexagonal pattern overlay a little bit bigger. I'm not yet sure which version I like more. In a very similar way, let's create a green version of those digits. Hide the blue glow layer and add a new channel mix layer. This will be green glow. And same as the last time, inside the red channel, we don't want to have a red channel. And you can see that immediately as I change this to 0%, everything looks green. Because now pretty much all the content is inside the green channel, but it's kind of dimmed. So inside the green channel, I will not use a green channel, but instead I will use a red channel, which will make it much brighter. But I feel like that at 100%, everything is oversaturated. So I'll just lower this to maybe like 80% or so, and maybe add a little bit of green inside. And then back inside the red channel, I will also add a little bit of green in there. Most of the highlights for the fill layer are inside the blue channel, which means that I can also increase the blue channel to the maximum value to show those highlights inside. And I think something like this looks nice. Let's export those digits one more time. And we can upload those two clocks as well. And so just like that, we have a three different versions of those digits. Actually four versions if you count the version without any effects. I want to talk about two more things. The first thing is the power consumption. Since this is using the USB-C cable, I was wondering if you can use the power bank to power this clock. And more importantly, how long will the power bank last? I have this very cheap USB tester and it should show some basic statistics. So after connecting the clock through this USB tester, it's showing 0 0.31 or 32 amps. I can use this online calculator and enter 0 0.31 amps and probably any decent power bank will have around 10,000 milliamp hours. And we of course assume that the power bank is 5 volts, same as the clock. In this case the battery life is around 1 day and 8 hours, so not quite so much. I've also seen a power bank recently that was about like 50,000 milliamp hours. In this case it will last 6 days, but that's still not very long time. So I think that in this case using a power bank might not be the best option. The second thing is about the real Nixie clock. I wanted to start the video saying if you like Nixie clock but those are very expensive to you, you can use the this clock. But I've actually found out that you can get this particular Nixie clock, including cubes, for around $130. Which is quite surprisingly cheaper than the IPS clock, which costs around $150. 
I mean on the official AlexTube website it's listed for $85 but unfortunately it's sold out there for both the black and white version. As for myself, I like both clocks. I like the real Nixie Tube clock because the look of those Nixie Tubes cannot be simulated by anything else and it simply looks great. On the other hand, I like the IPS clock as well, mainly because you can customize it to your needs, you can even create your own set of digits and if you want you can have a different theme every single day. This is actually the cheapest clock that the LX Tube offers, you can also get the version with 6 displays where those displays are sticking out and they look a little bit more like the Nixie Tubes. And that's all for today, if you create your own set of digits please send me a link, if you have questions or comments please put those down in the comment section, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon, thanks and bye.